Welcome to Electron Online. You may remember the equations relative to the cycloid that we discussed a few videos back. And here they are, x equals r times t minus the sine of t, and y equals r times 1 minus the cosine of t. What we're trying to do here is find the derivative of y with respect to x, and where the derivative is equal to 1. So we remember that dy dx can be expressed in terms of dy dt divided by dx dt. And so what we're going to do is find dy dt first. And remember that r is the radius of the circle. That's a constant. So the only variable here is t. So here we have r times the derivative of 1 is 0. And the derivative of cosine is the negative sine. So that becomes a positive sine of t. In the denominator, we get dx dt, which is equal to r times the derivative of t is equal to 1. And the derivative of sine is the positive cosine, so that's minus the cosine of t. So now we're trying to find, so that's, oh, by the way, let's simplify that because the r's cancel out. So this becomes equal to the sine of t divided by 1 minus the cosine of t. So this here is the derivative of y with respect to x. And again, since we used parametric equations, the variable there is still the parametric variable t. Now we're trying to find where the derivative is equal to 1. All right? So what we need to do here is think of some variable where when the sine of t is equal to 1 and the cosine of t is equal to 0, because then we get 1 divided by 1. And I know that the sine of t is equal to 1 when we have pi over 2, and the cosine of pi over 2 is equal to 0, so that seems to work. So we can say that dy dx is equal to 1 when t is equal to pi divided by 2. Because dy dx, when t is equal to pi over 2, is equal to the sine of pi over 2 divided by 1 minus the cosine of pi over 2, which is equal to 1 divided by 1 minus 0, which is 1. And that's what we're looking for. Now, could we have, hmm, let's see here. Yeah, that would be the only place where the slope can be equal to 1. Everywhere else, the slope will not be equal to 1. And that makes sense when we think about the cycloid, because the function of the cycloid, the slope, the, the graph looks like this. Yeah. So you can see that the slope can only be equal to 1 at this location here and this location there, not at the top, because that's where the slope is equal to 0. So you can see that it only occurs once after we have pi over 2, and of course, 2 pi plus pi over 2, and so forth, all the way down forever. And so that's how we find the derivative and specific values for the slope. That's how it's done.